H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to explain what is Jenkins tool and how this tool is going to work in continuous integration testing process. You know in the market there's a lot of buzz about the DevOps. Part of that the testers are going to involved in using this DevOps testing tools in order to be part of the process or in other words you are going to sync your testing activities along with the development process to help or to speed up the application delivery in an transparent manner. In other words, when the developers deploy a build to the QA, and the QA has to run the test automatically. Then provide the test results to give an indication where the build can be deployed to the production. So that is where this DevOps um, came into the picture. Now this Agile Agility, the project methodologies will push this DevOps part of this continuous integration process. Like in other words, like you know, like uh, we have the activities like the development, QA, and the production. So most of the time, in traditional way, like you are involved in pushing the stuff. As a tester, you are involved in this stage. Whenever the developers give a product to the testing, so you are involved as a traditional tester to make sure you are going to execute your test to ensure it products the quality it products the requirement it meets the requirements but what this agility part of this DevOps process what they're insisting is just you're going to move towards left not towards the right because things what happens is if you move towards the right that's too late in the game right that's where if you move towards left that's where like you give an indication there are some issues here then that's going to be less expensive instead of finding the same issue if you move towards right to the production stage because in order to fix that kind of bugs the issues that's late in the game and it's going to be cost more so that is where how you can reduce the cost on the product. That's where, like you know, 
this is a kind of the world the the slogan from the the QS perspective right the early you find a bug the less expensive instead if you find the same issue the same bug in later stages so that's what the agility is pushing towards development side, right? So why can't the tester involved part of this development process and find any issues during the development stage? So that's where you are involved more towards at the unit level testings and also you are involved more towards you do not wait till developers push the things right whenever the build is available you have to trigger your test automatically and then generate a report so how that is possible is that's where this Jenkins came into the picture. So this is mainly a collaboration tool, right? It's a collaboration tool between the QA and development team. And it's a very promising tool in this kind of uh, devs along with other tools, right? Jenkins is a very promising tool and it has its uh, identity in the market and this is basically continuous integration testing tool where you are going to run the test whenever the build is available from QA sorry whenever the build is available from the development team. You know the developers are going to push the builds and whenever the, they need the code changes due to some important bug fix or any requirement change that involves some functionality changes obviously that involves that leads to the, the underlying the code changes. So whatever the reason it might be, it could be a requirement change or it could be a functionality change or it could be a major bug fix. Like that leads to underlying the code changes and where they're going to maintain all this, the, the source code, obviously they're going to use some kind of configuration management tools to store the source code. So whenever this, this code went into this repository, then they build the application. And they push that build. How they are going to build this application is again they use the Jenkins tool. Right? They, they build using the source code, they build the application. So that your job is you are going to trigger another build job in Jenkins just to make sure whenever the build is ready from QA then this build is going to check and run the test. That's what we are going to discuss today how that is possible. So probably in today's demo I'm going to focus on just the execution part of the test. Maybe just uh, in other sessions I might talk how you can install the builds from QA side, what kind of tools that we're going to use and how you're going to check a build is available from QA, from, sorry, from development team, then how you're going to test it. That I'm going to discuss in the other session, but today I'm going to show you, like, say, for example, how you're going to run a automated test. 
So today's demo covers so the UFT automation test execution from Jenkins. So UFT, I know if you know this, this is an automation testing tool again from these dev apps. EFT is also a very promising tool on automation side. Where you are going to develop automation test scripts using the EFT unified functional testing tool from HP company and you can run those tests from Jenkins. So this is the kind of the scenario what I'm going to show you how you can run a EFT test from Jenkins. So for that, so this is uh, the EFT tool so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a couple of tests. Uh, to, to start with, I'm going to create a new test, right? And then, so I'm going to give, say this is uh, so my workflow one, right? So this is the workflow one. Say create. And then what I'm going to do is here, let's start with um, record. And here, like, so let's start with um, creating some sample tests, right, using this website. And hit OK. Okay, and let me open an Internet Explorer. Okay, this time I'm going to do a quick test for login on this application. Then enter the username, then the password, submit. Then I'm going to hit this sign up and close this browser instance and stop recording. So this is anyway like the test, like uh, how we did um, the, the script, right? This is actually the, the script and even when you play back. So it's going to run this test. Okay, this, the, the test started executing. Okay, so that way it's going to log in. One. Okay, so very good. So this is how like, the test is executed. And now let me create one more quick test, like say Devaflow 2. So probably let me add this test into a folder under the C drive 
Okay, so I'm going to add um, the test um, something. So Jenkins demo. I'm going to create a folder like the Jenkins demo. And then, so I'm going to add this workflow too into this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, again the same application but this time I'm going to create a different workflow say register so then I'm going to create a user let's say create test Okay, then close your browser instance and stop recording. So this is what like the, the test is, right? Say how it created um, with um, the, the username and the password and everything is done, right? So let's make sure, let's let me create, save this test and run it again, just to make sure the test is good. Okay, so very good. So the test is, um, right, like now we have two tests, right? One is, there are two workflows, basically the workflow one, and that's basically the login. The workflow two is um, just to register user. So let me save this test also to the same folder. That way I don't miss the things. Uh, okay. All right, so excellent. So now how we are going to run this test from Jenkins. You see like now I already installed the Jenkins. The installation part is pretty simple. What you have to do is um, if you go to um, the Jenkins download section, it's uh, online. You will get this jar file, um, sorry the var, like Jenkins.var. Just to make sure like you have the Java installed on the system where you want to run this var file, just go to your command command line then you should be able to run this war file but I have another video that explains how you can install and configure the Jenkins um, that's a very straightforward so right now actually on my system um, I have this Jenkins it's already up and running that's that's where it look once you execute this war file from the command prompt uh, this is what actually the command you're going to use, like the Java jar, and you're going to mention that var file. Then once the Jenkins up and running, then you're going to put local host and the port. Then you would see this screen. Then here, like so, you want to run those tests, right? You want to run those tests from Jenkins. So all you have to do is like you can see if you go to this Jenkins, there is a manage Jenkins. And here, like, you'll get different the plugins. Like, if you go to this Manage Plugins section. So, here, like, you can install available plugins. Or, um, let's check with the available plugins. And even you can also search because there are number of plugins available. Pretty much, like, you can run the test developed on any tool from Jenkins. That's where you have a number of plugins. So the one that you're looking at is HP plugins, right? You put HP and then search so that you will get um, even from HP also like you'll get different uh, the plugin stuff here, see? So then go back, uh, go to the one that you're going to look at HP application automation tools, right? So select this plugin and you're going to install it. So even without restart, you can install. Right, install without restart. So it's basically like installing this plugin you see now. And so once it executes and install. So now it started installing. Good. So the, the plugin is installed successfully. And then now let's go to the Jenkins homepage. 
So how are you going to run this test? Basically in Jenkins everything we call as a job. That way you can schedule different jobs. You see, create a new job. Okay. So what you're doing here, create a new jobs. Then you can, my first job is to run the EFT workflow one. Right, that's my first job. This is the job name and freestyle project. Then you're going to hit OK button. So this way like you'll get every job contains uh, these different sections like the general source code management this way like mostly you're going to make a connection to your source code management tools like there are a number of tools here again um, like your GitHub or Perforce or different other things like you can even make a connection to those things uh, so probably we're going to talk those things and my next uh, video lectures kind of thing and then build triggers is this is where you're going to check whether the, the the prerequisite kind of thing right whether you have the developer build is ready for you to run this job okay that's what the build triggers build environments and the builds and the, the build is nothing but like where you're going to mention what are the different tests you want to run right and then the post build actions is so in our case post build is you're going to generate the report like how the test say executes okay so now even if you scroll like you see the same thing like this what actually I mentioned like the source code management tools you can use this github and the build triggers and the build environments and the build so this way like you're going to add a build step uh, so you want to run HP test frame file system right even you can run your test frame HP ALM ALM is again on the application of second management tool. It's a, a new version of the quality center. Even you can run the tests that are stored in from quality center. But right now we are using the test that is saved under my C drive. That's where you're going to select for file system. Right, so you're going to add that step and you can mention um, here like you're going to select what steps you want to, what are the tests that you want to run. So pretty much like go to that particular folder like uh, where you have this um, test save right Jenkins demo and the other two different workflows like this my the first workflow right so you're going to mention that one right that's the test like this way you can mention whether you have 100 200 300 500 tests you can mention those tests in sequence then you're going to do this um, the post build action right um, that's something like you're going to generate a report so post build action um, uh, you're going to generate a DNA test report then obviously like all this um, test is going to run frame and the EFT is going to generate the XML files. So you're going to look at put store.xml. That's where like you're going to pull the report and generate this JNU test report. Okay. So that's why like you're going to select here um, the JNU the test report. And also you can generate publish HP test results. Okay. Then that's it. So you're going to add this build actions because the EFT generate uh, the, the test results in XML. So you're going to use that XML file and generate this report. So save it. So now when you look at here, um, it's going to create the job. See this, uh, this is your first job, right? Even if you go to this Jenkins homepage, then you should be able to see this is the job. Right, where it's going to run your test. This way you can add multiple jobs. Suppose like you want to create one more, right, say a new item. 
then you can put something like say here t um like one more thing here because you already know like there is one similar job you already created you can also copy from that so you're going to select here then eft workflow you want to copy everything from that right you're going to create a copy of it then you can mention what this job is going to be the workflow tool and hit OK. So now it's going to copy everything so that you need not start from scratch again because more or less the jobs are same, right? Because you want to run the same kind of test, but only the tests are going to be different. So here again, you see everything else is copied and you're going to mention here the workflow too in this Right, so this is uh, your test workflow too. The post production and everything is copied, so you need to worry about those things. And then, so here you can also set these build triggers. That's why you're going to know you're going to set this workflow too differently, right? That means what is this build triggers? Just you are saying check this build after others projects are built, and what you're saying is. Whenever the workflow one completes, then you want to start your workflow two, right? Just you want to make sure the workflow one executes, then you can do the work, workflow two. So that way you're going to mention, okay, the dependency here, right? So build this particular project, build this particular job only after this project is built, okay? So that's it. So let's save this. And so now we're going to run this, right? So for example, I'm going to run this one, right? Say, so just uh, let's see how this is going to work. Right? So you're going to build this one, right? The workflow one. And then it automatically triggers the workflow two. Okay? Because you mentioned the condition. So I click this build one, build now. So it's now building. It's building this particular job. Even the develop from the development side also, right? The, how they're going to build applications is the same way. They're going to pull all the source code and they're going to run some kind of the jobs to build the application. Okay, so hopefully it's going to be quick. So it's building. Okay, so I think um, still it's doing this. Um, so I think something is going on. I see this. Okay, so it opens the first test, you see, and so it executes, and then it's going to, okay, I think uh, the first test is, the first workflow is executed. And so it's going to trigger the next one. Even if you look at here, if you go to the home page, then you also see what kind of builds uh, that's currently running. You see, right now actually it's executing the workflow one. As soon as that completes, so it's going to, it's supposed to trigger the workflow two. Right, once that finish execution. Okay, so let me refresh this particular screen. 
Okay, so it seems like you see, now you see the status like that this particular build is failed. That's where the workflow tool didn't run. That's the kind of uh, the other stuff like what I would like to explain. So for example, you got um, the developers push a build but the application, the build is not successful, right? There's no point to execute your test. Assume like, so you have this, um, this workflow is depending on, so the workflow is depending on workflow one, right? If the workflow one is failed, then there's no point to execute the workflow two, right? So like you're going to look at now why this workflow one is failed. Just click on this and then go to this, um, see the date like it's going to explain when this workflow is executed. So hit this and you should be able to go to this console output. Then you should see why the test was failed. This way like it's going to report. This is basically the, the, the report um, um, what it's uh, generating. Basically, it seems like your test is passed, right? Only the problem here is it's not able to generate this uh, report. The publishing the report part is failed. You see, um, step published JUnit test results report failed. No test report files were found. Okay, so it could be a configuration error. Okay, so I mean, so it's saying like there's there's there seems to be like something a a plugin kind of um, issues that's where it's failed. But as far as this your test concern, it's passed. So here the good thing just we we got to know is like if a particular build is failed, then it's not going to trigger the following builds. Even if you look at here, like it's going to generate um, the kind of the report also, probably like so I'm going to build again the same test. Then I can show you like what kind of uh, results it also generated the graphs. Okay, so this time also like um, it seems like there is some plugin like uh, the issues what it's um, generating like here it's going to show you uh, basically like it's saying like your tests are passed there is something the, the report generation part has some issues okay so that's all like you can schedule and run them uh, once you install that plugin you should be able to generate the report also. So anyway, like we're going to talk, uh, um, I'm going to discuss some more details about this, uh, the Jenkins, how you can install the application, then how your test is going to verify the application, the build from development team is successful, then how you can trigger your test execution. Okay, it's a good to know and it's a very promising tool, the Jenkins and part of this continuous integration testing in DevOps environment. It's a very, very useful tool. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for your time.